we got new and emerging details about Big Juke and Yo Gotti. You know, Yo Gotti is on stage performing after his recent brother's uh, murder, and we're gonna jump right into it and talk about everything and all the facts and details that need to proceed forward with this conversation. So let's jump into this. Yo Gotti's already back on stage, surprising fans at 42 Doug's uh, concert. You know, less than a week after his brother Big Juke was killed in Memphis. And, you know, he's already back on concert on stage. His brother just got the brothers that he's been through it all with, you know, done everything with. And I know some people grieve differently about what goes on in their life, but this is something major and significant. For him just to show up on the stage and, you know, not have any uh, grievance to the public or talk about anything to the public, because remember, this on stage performance that recently just happened was a tribute to his bigger brother, Jew. Gotti's, you know, looking iced out with the chains and an angelic all-white fit going about his business despite the very public uh, tragedy, tragedy that he's coping with. But as we recently and previously reported, the Tennessee-born rapper's big brother was shot and killed Saturday, January 13th, outside a restaurant in Memphis. He was just 47 years old. And remember, in the video that started circulating online about Juke's final hours where he grieved with his close friends and family at his uncle's restaurant, the shooting happened just hours after he left the event. BJ worked with Yo Gotti closely at his label collective music group through and more on the business promotion side than as his artist. And so cops still aren't sure exactly who killed Juke or why though. They have a pretty big lead in the case, posting pics of a white Ford Explorer they say may have carried his killers and offering the public a cash reward for information. But if they're posting pics of the white Ford Explorer and they're offering the public a cash reward for supposedly having more information, they must know what exactly is going on. They just want to have this information from the public so that it's solidified, so that in court there's, there's no way this person can get out of the situation, that they have all the documents and all the proof that's needed from the witnesses. But nobody wants to come forward as a witness. Why is that? Think about it. And so. Bottom line is, we're sorry for your loss, Gotti, and happy to see you back doing what you love, but at the same time, you gotta have some love for your brother that just died, you know? Big Juke, like I said in earlier in the video, you went through it all with him. And then for you just to go back on stage performing, like nothing's happening, and even your wife, Angelica Simmons, uh, said something about this where, you know, why are you performing on the stage and then you're trying to say it's a tribute, but you're just singing the song. He, like he wasn't what was he saying in this tribute what was he talking about with his brother he wasn't saying any condolences he wasn't you know saying a five or ten minutes speech to the side and talking about what his brother did in his life or everything that they've been through no he just simply performed on the stage and then that's the whole concert that's the whole event and talk so, about and i say how it's related to young how the feds um this case may be turned over to the feds because it's in connection with Young Dolph. And, you know, this case now may be turned over to the feds because this right here is in connection with Young Dolph. Now, if we all remember what happened to Young Dolph getting set up at the Makita's Cookie Store, and, you know, he helped out his community. He helped out the public. He talked to the people. He did right for his community. You know, he's going to his favorite cookie store. All of a sudden, you know, somebody enters through the back door. He gets shot through the window. You know, they get in the getaway car, the yellow and the white suburban, and then everything is just like, what, peachy after that? You gotta think about what's going on behind the scenes. People are getting set up nowadays. You even can look at P&B Rock when he was at the uh, Chicken and Roscoe and Waffles with his wife, and his location got tagged, and all of a sudden a guy pulls up to shoot him in front of his wife and his kids for a change? You gotta think about what's going on today, people. People are getting set up left and right. People can say they're your friend, they can say they're all for you, but then behind the scenes or behind closed doors, they're actually ratting out your location, ratting out what you got going on with your personal surveillance and your security, and looking for the loopholes to get in, in between that, to do something to you. And this is what you gotta keep in mind, people. You gotta be looking out for these things. But, you know, we're gonna continue on with uh, Big Juke and Yo Gotti and everything that's going on with that right now. And so, you know, Anthony Big Juke Mims was 47, was older, was the older brother of the noted Memphis rapper and record label mogul Yo Gotti, aka Mario Mims. 
And so Anthony Mims was actively involved in Gotti's record company, the collective music group or CMG label. It's not known what Anthony Mims' official title with the label was or if he had one, but he was often seen at the side of the label's artists at various events and industry sources and indicate he was involved in scouting talent helping manage and promoting projects for the company. Now, if you guys don't know Big Juke, he actually was one of the CEOs. He wasn't just your average guy. He was one of the good top dogs in the company. He was one of the major people making the labels and managing things with Yo Gotti at the big tables. So this is just some good information for you guys to know on the side. But another thing about this is that the commercial appeal made efforts to reach representatives of the CMG label, which is partnered with major label Interscope, but they did not respond to requests for comment. Much of the immediate reaction online following the news of Mims' death came from the CMG artist Anthony Mims worked with. While Yo Gotti has not yet publicly commented on his brother's uh, death, several artists and performers took to social media following the news. And so on Instagram, superstar CMG rapper Lorilla posted a photo of herself at the 2023 Grammy Awards with Yo Gotti and Big Duke with the caption, get your rest, with the crying emoji. And if you guys don't know, Glorilla was a good friend of Yo Gotti's and Juk. She actually had Juk behind the scenes, if you guys didn't know. And even though, you know, he has a and everything, he did have some side affairs that were potentially going on. And so she actually just so you guys know about this. Another CMG rapper, Big Boogie, posted a photo of himself with his head bowed referencing Big Juk with the words, forever love you. Big Boogie also posted a series of Instagram stories with photos and videos of Big Juk with similar messages. And so if you guys don't know about Big Boogie, Big Boogie is a known rapper in the uh, West Side community. You know, he's known for his uh, rap music that talks about life and, you know, talks about love. And he, Big Juk was one of his best friends. So he's just sending out his condolences to Big Juk right now. And because they had a deal that was going on on the low. And people don't know this behind the scenes of what that deal was. But I'm going to explain it more. And so, Blue Face's manager, WAC100, is sending an apology to So WAC, like many fans, grew deeply troubled by the new Yo, news Yo Gotti's brother, Big Juke, was shot and killed over the weekend and declared MLK's vision to be dissolved in 2024 while owning up his own sins as well. And so, in his open letter, WAC laminates, my apologies, Dr. King, you fought for de uh, des des desecration. And we turned around the segregated ourselves, your fight for the people who turned into the fighting of our own people. I myself at one time played a part in this. My apologies on your born day. You died for what we take for granted. Rest in peace, Dolph. Rest in peace, Big Jook. Rest in peace, King Vaughn. Rest in peace, Draco. Rest in peace, Mar Marlo. And rest in peace, N Nipsey Hussle. And so dozens of stop the violence movements have followed each of the rap artists' deaths. And so, meanwhile, Memphis police are currently looking and asking the public for leads in juke shooting. A Ford Explorer they believe may be a getaway vehicle is on high alert in the city. And so, talking about this right now, they're asking about leads to the Ford Explorer, but how is it that they don't know where this getaway driver drove to? So, CMG, they put themselves in a bad predicament because they already knew what they did to Young Dolph and everything that happened with that. They promised Young Dolph on some labels, you know, they set him up, he got set up in the Makita's cookie shop, and now we're looking at Big Juk. It was a setup of what happened with that Ford White Explorer. He actually got set up and shot. Now Yo Gotti, going to his uh, new concert, is wearing a bulletproof vest, but Yo Gotti thinks that bulletproof vest is gonna save him. If they wanna take him out, they'll take him out. And so, you know, Young Dolph being taken out the way he was taken out, that already caused a stir up in his city of Memphis. That already held back a, a, a war that was potentially gonna happen in the streets right there. But when Big Juke got taken out after Young Dolph, people were tired of it, people were fed up. Now there's a big war going on in Memphis streets. You know, people were getting the answers that they want. People were getting the justice that they want. But we're trying our best to do as much as, much as we can and as much as we can for the public, as much as we can for our people. But the streets right now are getting a little crazy. So, the city is on high alert right now, and with the city being on high alert, we may start doing uh, closures. We may have to do the RICO, RIP to Young Dolph, RIP to Juke, and hey, this is a continuing war going on in our community and in the suburbs. 
You know, we are going to try our best to help the community. We're going to try our best to help our people. We're going to try our best to not get civilians involved. But we're going to have to see what happens, and only time will tell. You know, everything that happened with the Makita's cookie shop, that's still under investigation, too. Even though that's long gone and it was supposed to be over, we're still investigating things about Young Dolph's murder and about the crime scene and about the getaway drivers and the setup. You know, for that to happen how it happened, shouldn't have happened. 